call a regularly scheduled select board meeting to <laughs> the order. Uh, are there any citizen comments tonight? But I don't think there are any citizen comments. Um, so we'll move on to additions to and deletions from the posted agenda. I have none, but anything else? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so, manager's report. Okay. Um, just wanted the board to know that uh, you may have seen ads out for a temporary full time office assistant. Uh, which is to replace Nikki when she goes out on maternity leave. It's not a new position or anything. And it's um, um, mainly because the uh, part-time person we are in the zoning office is no longer available to cover that position. That was uh, part of what we were planning on doing, but that's not worked out. Um, <clears throat> the shoes on Central Street were uh, are still there as of noon they were supposed to be gone by friday but i'm sure the company got hung up and uh um and i'm sure they will do it eventually the local tree service and they're very um committed to getting removed uh just reporting about the uh trucks at the last meeting uh the board approved the truck purchase contingent upon the uh, government pricing concessions that in fact the pricing is based on and uh, Board of Claremont confirmed that so the orders are good place. Um, I just want to let the board know that you know I'm uh, keeping my head above water in the public works director's job and mine um, but um, getting a lot of high points and doing the best I can. Just leave it at that. All right, thank you. So we have a presentation um, on bridge one over Gulf Stream. Is there uh, someone online to present? Hi, yes, that's me, Laura Stone with VTrans. Um, I have a presentation here, so I'm gonna try to share my screen. It looks like host is disabled, participant screen sharing. I think we'll take care of get that. There we go. So hopefully everyone can see my presentation now. Um, so I've been asked to keep this pretty quick because you have a pretty long agenda today. Um, so I'm gonna just fly through this and if you need me to slow down at any point, just let me know. So this is the alternatives presentation meeting for um, FAS Route 166, that's Palm Fret Road, Bridge One over Gulf Stream. I'm Laura Stone, the VTrans scoping engineer. We also have Adam Goudreau, who's the, uh, gonna be the VTrans design project manager for the project. So really the purpose of the meeting tonight, um, we wanna give you an overview of, of the bridge, talk about the constraints, the alternatives that we looked at in the scoping report. Ultimately, we wanna build consensus towards a direction for this bridge project. Um, we also wanna uh, provide an opportunity to ask questions and voice concerns. I have that at the bottom there, but feel free to just interrupt me at any time. So here's a location map. Um, let me see if I can get my pointer up. There we go. So the bridge is located up here uh, north of Vermont Route 12 on Palm Fret Road. There's an aerial view. It is located just south of Stimmets Road. Um, so this slide is really, this is a, a timeline of our project development process at VTrans. And this is really just to show you this project's at a really early, early stage of project development. So a project's been funded, we're in this stage called project definition. This is where we identify the environmental resources, the cultural resources, we evaluate alternatives for the project. Um, we have this par public participation piece 
And ultimately, we want to build consensus towards, um, towards a, a preferred alternative. So, so once we have that, that's when the project will be defined, we'll move into design, that's when we're going to be quantifying areas of impact, start the permitting process, the right of way process if needed. After project design, a contract will be awarded and the project will move into construction. So again, we are at a really early stage of project development. Uh, I'm going to skip over some slides. I kept them all in here so people can go back and look at this presentation. And if they have questions, reach out to me. But just in terms of keeping this, um, keeping this brief, skip over a couple. So this is a, a picture looking south over the bridge. It's classified as a major collector. Um, the bridge is an 82 foot uh, span, single span rolled beam bridge constructed in 1937, reconstructed in 1973. And it is owned by the town of Woodstock. So there is gonna be, um, there is gonna be town funds involved in this project, uh, which brings me on to my next slide. So prior to 2012, all town highway bridge programs were 80% federally funded, 10% state funded and 10% town funded. Um, so per Act 153 of the 2012 legislative session, uh, the local share is reduced by 50% for rehabilitating the bridge versus replacement. And it's reduced an additional 50% if you close the road during construction and don't um, construct a temporary bridge. So as you can see here, the, the town share is anywhere from 10% to 5% to 2.5%. And the state does pick up that that extra share. Here's a picture looking north over the bridge. Um, there's a dry hydrant located in the project area. There's also um, quite a bit of aerial utilities. They're located pretty far off the road. So um, hopefully depending on uh, the alternative that we move forward with, we might be able to, um, to put the project through without, a, without an aerial relocation. So the existing conditions of bridge one, the deck is rated in fair condition. There's some concrete popping off of, of the bottom. We call that spalled areas. There's some exposed uh, reinforcing steel. Um, also there's uh, drains located on the bridge on the sides and those are in, in rusted and in really failed condition and there's leaking on the beams below. So bridge inspection ratings, again, the deck is rated a five. It's in fair condition. That's a picture there of that spalled out area with the reinforcing steel showing. Uh, the superstructure, so the superstructure are these beams on top of that, uh, that the deck sits on. So these beams are in good condition. They're rated, we consider that a seven. And the substructure, which is the, we call them an abutment or really the foundations on either end of the bridge. Those are also in good condition. They're rated a seven. Again, beams, really good condition. Uh, the abutments, uh, they're in good condition. It's another, there's typical back wall. Again, the back wall, we're not seeing any spalled out um, concrete. Um, debris fill up, uh, build up following large flow events. So because this bridge is located in a flood zone, it's, it's located in a flood area, there's, <laughs> there's this debris that's, that's going to get trapped under the bridge after high flow events. Um, that's really, that's not based on, um, it's not based on the span or anything. So right now the, the bank is 40, 40 feet and yeah. This has a span of 80 feet. So we're spanning the bank, we're doing what we can here. It's just, it's in a flood zone. So regardless of the alternative that's chosen, this is just gonna have to be a maintenance activity um, that happens periodically from the town. Not much we can do about it. So that's that drain that I mentioned that's failed. Um, so with any of the alternatives, this would, um, this would be replaced. So here's a view looking um, east or looking downstream. There are some wetlands, um, some agricultural soils, as well as um, some areas of archeological sensitivity located in the project area. The existing condition, so this is the layout. So if like you're looking at it from a bird's eye view, looking down this gray box here, that is the bridge. The brown portions, that's the roadway. 
This neon green line right here, that is the existing town owned right of way. So you can see there's, um, there's quite a bit of rights here. The aerial utilities, that's this dotted line right here that says ECT. Um, also to point out these wetlands here. So this line with the triangles, those are the delineated wetlands. And there's some in this quadrant as well. So design criteria and considerations. Um, there's an average daily traffic of 2000 vehicles per day. Design hourly volume. So that's your peak hour of traffic of 230 vehicles per hour. Percent trucks are 15.4. And here are the alternatives that we considered, and um, I'll go through these after this slide. Um, the no action alternative, a deck rehabilitation, a deck replacement, a superstructure replacement, and then a full bridge replacement. And we only looked at on alignment options because this is on a straight, straight tangent, so it didn't make sense to look at off alignment structures. So alternative one, the minor rehabilitation, that's really, we leave the existing deck in place, we leave the existing beams or the superstructure in place, and we just do some minor concrete patching. This maintains the existing bridge width of 11.4. Those are two 11 foot travel lanes with four foot shoulders. And that is um, that exceeds the minimum standard of 11.3. Um, so really any of the alternatives maintains this existing bridge width. Alternative one layout looks exactly like uh, the existing layout because the bridge remains in place. With this, again, we just do concrete repair on the deck. The deterioration is addressed and it, we'd expect about a 20 year design life. Alternative two typical section looks very similar. It's that 11-4 typical. So with this option, we really would just be replacing this top portion here, this concrete, and we would replace the deck right on top of the existing beams. Um, again, we would be on the existing beams, so we would maintain that 80, 82 foot span right there. And we'd expect a 50 year design life based on those, those good rated substructures and superstructure. Alternative three, so a superstructure replacement. Again, it has that same typical section, those 11 foot travel lanes with four foot shoulders. The only difference with this is that we would be replacing the concrete deck as well as those steel beams underneath. So the existing foundations on either end, those would remain in place. There's the layout, again, we would be found, it, the new, the new superstructure would be founded on those existing abutments on either end, so it would look very similar. Um, new deck railing and superstructure, and again, we'd expect about a 50 year design life. Alternative four typical section, same typical section, that 11 four typical section would be maintained. Um, in, this, in this case, the, uh, the deck as well as the beams and the foundations would all be replaced. And so it would be a brand new bridge. Um, we would recommend not shortening this, even though the bank is only 40 feet wide. Um, our hydraulics unit has, has recommended maintaining that 82 foot uh, length. And so again, it would look very similar. And with a full bridge replacement, we'd expect a 75 year design life. So the recommendation in our scoping report was a deck replacement. It would address the deteriorating condition of that concrete deck. Um, we would replace the railings on either side and those, and those downspouts that are in poor condition. So by replacing those downspouts, that would mean there's no longer uh, roadway runoff dripping onto the beam. So that would also um, keep the beams nice and dry for years to come. It results in all components being in good condition or better with a minimum upfront and annualized cost. Um, again, the existing typical section exceeds the minimum standards. So we'd be maintaining that 11 foot, four foot typical section. It would have a 50 year design life. Um, so on to maintenance of traffic. 
So we looked at three options. We looked at an offsite detour, phased construction, and a temporary bridge. Now with an offsite detour, we would close the road. Um, the detour would be chosen and signed by the town. There'd be a 45 day closure duration. And the shortest detour route around is one mile end to end. That is that Stimmitz Road. That's a class three gravel road that has, um, I believe it's, it's posted for 24,000 pounds. Um, so this is really just the shortest route around that we're showing. That's that one mile end to end. So from one end of the bridge all the way to the other is one mile. Um, there are longer detour routes around that, that the town could choose if they wanna keep it all on class uh, two or better roads. Um, but ultimately uh, on a class two road, it's up to the town to choose the appropriate uh, detour. So phased construction, this is when we construct one side of the bridge at a time while maintaining traffic on the bridge. So you can see in this picture, traffic is maintained on this side while they work on this side of the bridge. It would be alternating one-way traffic with signals on either end. This is what um, the first phase would look like. So traffic would be on this, on this top portion here <laughs> and phase two and a temporary bridge. So we'd uh, recommend a one lane temporary bridge constructed either downstream or upstream. There's really not much located in the project area. An upstream temporary bridge um, would have potential impacts to wetlands over here, depending on, depending on this fill. Um, it would require additional right of way, um, temporary rights to be, um, to be obtained from this property owner up here. And then a downstream temporary bridge. Uh, this has more impacts to the utilities and would definitely require a utility relocation. Um, again, there's additional right of way that would be required for the section outside of the town owned right of way. So our recommendation here, a deck replacement with traffic maintained on an offsite detour for 45 days. Uh, again, it would address the deteriorating condition of that deck results in all components being good or better. Um, we're exceeding the minimum standard for bridge width and it would have a 50 year design life. So here's the cost matrix and there's really a lot going on in this um, picture. So I'll just um, bring to your attention this line right here. So this bold line right here, that is the town share for the project with the percentages. So for the recommendation, it would have a 2.5% share. So we consider a deck replacement or a superstructure replacement as a rehabilitation. So that would get you that 50% reduction in share and also the offsite detour. Um, so this ranges from the recommended alternative has approximately $30,000 for a town share versus if you were to go all the way up to a full bridge replacement, 140,000 or with a temporary bridge, 300,000. Um, so you can take a look at this later. And if you have any questions, just you can reach out to me. So currently we have this in the budget for 2025, um, total cost estimate of $1.3 million, town share of $33,000. That's for that 2.5% share. So if the town decided they wanted a temporary bridge, increase um, or a different alternative that's just for the preferred alternative. Um, so next steps uh, at this point we're going to wait for the town to respond on how they would like to proceed with this project what alternative they'd like to choose. After that we would develop conceptual plans um, we'd send them back to the town uh, to comment. Um, at that point if everything looks good we would process the, uh, the finance and maintenance agreement start the right-of-way process, start design, um, and the town would get updates on the project plans and estimates at each submittal. Um, so before I open up to questions and comments, and I know that was really quick, uh, there is this, uh, this website at the top here, and the town has a copy of this website here. So this is a public-facing website that anybody can go to. Tonight's presentation will be up on that website. 
conceptual plans, final plans, all those plan sites, plan sets will be put up on that public facing site. So anybody can go and kind of track the project, track the progress of the project as it, as it moves along. Any questions, comments? I do, I do have one question. Um, I think that you said you're the VTRAN's recommendation, your recommendation was one way, um, our single lane bridge, like temporary bridge. Our recommendation is to close the road. Is so an offsite detour. Right, that's what, and then, so my only, is that a single lane offsite detour? Oh, sorry, let me back up. The if it's one-way traffic control, is that wired in or is that solar? If if we use that option. So with either phased construction, we would maintain traffic through the project site and it would be one lane alternating through the project site. So that's with phased construction or a temporary bridge. And I believe those, um, those traffic lights are generated, are on a generator. I could be wrong about that, but I don't believe they're wired in. Adam might have a better, um, the, better. Uh, the reason I ask is just from a project on Route 12 earlier that the uh, lights kept going out and we had major traffic um, issues with backups. And um, so if we go that route, I just wanted to make sure that we would address that issue in the planning phase. Okay, that's a really good comment. I hadn't heard of that issue before. No, thank you. And I think Susan had a question. Um, yes, if we went with the recommendation of a deck replacement and detour, what's the um, time, time of construction? How long would the bridge be closed approximately? So it would be closed for approximately 45 days. That 45 day closure is based on a cast in place deck. So that's when they have to come out, pour the concrete, wait for it to cure, um, they have to form all that up. So there's some time involved in that. This is a good location to option it out for precast deck panels. Um, that would be up to the contractor. Um, if, if we went that route, that 45 days would be reduced. Um, and that's really, you know, 45 days is, is our conservative, you know, we're not gonna go past 45 days. But once we get a construction schedule and we know the means and methods, it's possible that that would be reduced. One question, if we, if we go the detour route over on Steinmetz Road, we don't need any traffic lights or anything, right? No traffic lights, nope. Yeah. So <laughs> under phase construction, does that add um, time and money to a project? It does. It, so phase construction is really slow just because it, you need to perform every single construction activity or most activities twice. And so you have to come out and pour this side of the deck and then you have to come out and pour the other side of the deck. And so it, it is slow and it's one lane alternating throughout that entire time. The other thing with phased construction is that the town share would increase from 2.5% to 5% because they wouldn't get that 50% reduction for closing the road. Um, so just something to be aware of. So with the phased construction, it is a bit more expensive and it's a higher share for the town. So that would go from 30,000 to 80,000. Laura, when do you need a decision from the town on um, what method uh, they would choose, we would choose to do? Yeah, that's the million dollar question. I get that question a lot. And, um, you know, next month is fine. Two months from now is fine. The longer you wait, you know, if you wait six months before giving us a decision, um, that's okay. It just means that that 2025 construction could become 2026 construction. Because at this point, until the town gives us a direction, the project just goes standstill. Yeah. And, I really uh, think alternative to option A is like the clear winner. Do we need to drag this out? Yeah. 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 I see Rita has her hand up. Yeah, I was going to call on Rita. Hi. Um, I, I also want to point out, and maybe Laura could explain too, I know other town highway bridges um, when towns do choose to 
um, you know, forego a temporary bridge and just close it completely. Do they have, um, does VTrans give a grant to assist with like um, enforcement or um, if, you know, a lot of the detour traffic goes on Stimmets, there might be some, um, you know, additional maintenance that the town has to do to upkeep with that extra stuff. Um, so I just want to kind of that, well, that's a good question. So we offer that grant. Um, it's the town highway mitigation grant. We offer it on state, um, state owned bridges. And so if we have a state owned bridge and we're expecting traffic is gonna be going around on local roads, we will reimburse the town for that. Um, the way we see it, because, because there is this reduction in, in share, um, some of those extra funds could be used for if you if the town needs enforcement, if they need um, whatever they need, if they need uh, additional uh, calcium chloride on the road or, or whatever. So that is available for state owned bridges, but not here. Gotcha. And then the town would be responsible for the sign package. Yes. Like the detour sign, not the contractor. Correct. Correct. So we would include the signs at either end of the bridge, um, just for safety to make sure that nobody's going to drive into the construction zone. But the, the signs around the detour to let cars know where to go, that, that would be the responsibility of the town. Yep. And to sign for the MUTCD. And with that 45 day closure, we do um, something called incentives disincentive. And so um, for every day that the contractor opens the bridge um, before that 45 days, they would, get, they would get money. And for every day, if they go over this 45 days, um, it's a disincentive and they have to pay us a, a quite a bit, quite a lot of money. It's for every hour past that 45 days. And I can say we've done a lot of these closures, over a hundred of them, and it's only been twice that the contractor hasn't hasn't made that deadline. And those th those were more complicated situa situations. Certainly not um, certainly not a site like this. So we're pretty confident in those in those numbers. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would just like to comment to the board that I agree with Terry. This pretty much seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. I, I, Sign package is easier than a feeling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not you know, sure about true. Steinitz Road, but well, it's pretty I, I narrow. Right on it. It is narrow. You probably have to keep it graded in a bunch of weeks. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think it'll. I, I think a lot of people, some... once they know that's that's a detour, they will just choose to come down Route 12 instead. Yeah. If they're coming from that direction or going that way. Yep. Um, but I mean, it, economically and like in terms of time it takes to get the project done, it's really yep. straightforward. <laughs> I agree. All right. Which, so, do we want to make a decision tonight or should we revisit? I think it? we have to warn it. I don't, I mean, I, I don't think. And not warrant, I mean, but I think it should public plumbing. It has to be on the agenda, I would think, so that anybody like on Steinitz, Stimitz Road would know. So we'll I keep mean, it on the we'll keep it on the agenda for um next meeting. October evening meeting. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, mm -hmm. I, I just think under, I think that's under fair. the rules we probably can't just go from having a presentation to a vote. Yep. Sounds fair. And this brings us to Permits. So we got the uh, first one is. Do you want to come up? Hi. Hey. Yeah, please. So we have your application. Okay. And just so you know, what you received from the state, I made you copy that information. It's right up here. It, it told us absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> no, so we have a lot no. of questions for you. Okay, sure. So I've been licensed. Or do you want to ask questions? No. Why don't, yeah, do you want to tell us and then we can, it was left over? Okay, so I've been licensed by the state for a tier one um, cultivation. Technically, that is. 125 plants for a thousand square foot canopy and it's mixed use so that can be indoor and or outdoor 
I don't have any intentions of growing that much. <laughs> <laughs> that's just this how it comes. Is kind of a, we are, I am planning to um, cultivate indoor this winter mm -hmm. um, in hopes of supplementing uh, what we might need at my neighborhood store. Okay. Um, I have under the number of personal use plants that are allowed each year mm -hmm. outdoor. Um, so the mixed use of the city can utilize those plants as well. Um, outdoor, I would plan in the spring probably to have more, no more than 20 plants. Probably. Okay. And in, it, they require that the um, base is locked in the basement. And um, <laughs> yeah, um, video surveillance, mm -hmm. which we have. We don't have a, I don't have the whole space set up ready to go or anything. Um, I was waiting for the license. And, um, the cult, and then drying and curing is in a separate locked room. Um, and that's and, because of the permit that that's part of being tier one. Um, like the separate lock. Yeah. To, but yeah, I mean, it has to be a lock room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. and then I okay. This will be an existing structure. It's no new structure. Right? No new structures. No. And um, technically, it is a private building. So I did get a, a letter from the um, Department of Public Safety, the fire marshal saying he has no jurisdiction. And um, I do have the security plan. Um, the outdoor, they only require one um, measure of security and you're in, in a um, motion activated public or and or you can use a um, game camera. Okay. It doesn't require a fence if you're a tier one, but it does have to not be able to be seen from there. So the security measures you just mentioned, those were requirements with a state permit. Yes. You have to bear with us because this is the That's first okay. one we're doing. <laughs> it's really and, and I actually sat through a training last week and it was, uh, it didn't go into grow operations. It was all dedicated pretty much to uh, retail. Yeah. yeah. So, no. um, have, have you had any conversations with the zoning administrator on whether you, or not you have to get a permit there? He said I didn't. Okay. Yeah, I know it looks, yeah. I mean, just looks to me like it fits, you know, the yeah. home occupation exemption or something with no new buildings, no, no, other, no other employee, right? Just no. Not. There won't be people going around doing like farm tours or anything. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I see one question from Lisa. Yeah. Hi, um, Lisa Lawler. Um, I'm on the uh, Woodstock Cannabis Commission as a consultant. And my one concern about home grow is the outdoor, um, there's only one, t in tier one, there only has to be one of several safety measures and fence or camera or in that. And I don't even know if that can be addressed in, in the town zoning, but it's a very risky endeavor in, in that way. Um, for public safety and the state has not been clear about what kind of protections are out there for growers. And I'm concerned about a kid figuring out, a teenage kid figuring out where it is, stealing a plant, um, the, the, um, the retail establishment is very clear but I feel like the grower establishment is not clear enough and not saying PJ isn't doing enough for that, but I have concerns around the public safety measures and I'm not the only one 
I know that Robbie Blish said it, and I, I just want to pass that on. Um, I don't have any other issues other than the state has not provided enough information about public safety for indoor outdoor growers on private property. So I just wanted to pass that on because it is a concern for me. Okay, thank you. Yep. Um, it sounds like the indoor growing has more restrictions than outdoor. Yeah, I know. It's just it's you know, just yeah. the amount of those up to six plants to flower at once we've been growing. Right. I think that but, that's for all the CBE farms near the colleges. <laughs> that's what I heard. Um, On my reading was we can't require yeah. through our zoning or anything. We can't require more than the state does. Right. So yeah, obviously, if you meet the state, you tend to keep plants. Yeah. being stolen. Yes. Um, <laughs> because you don't want to steal them until they're flowering. By the time they're flowering, they're, they're like eight feet tall. You know, they're huge. Yeah. And I, we have, we do have two really bad dogs. But you know, <laughs> if, if we have, if we can't see from the road and we actually don't have, you know, and we're, I would love to get this indoor grow going and um, would be happy to look into additional safety measures for the outdoor once we yep. once and we get it going. But if the state hasn't provided more guidance, we can't then yeah, we I mean as long as you're following the requirements of the tier one, I'm I'm satisfied. Yeah, they, yes. I mean, well they gave me my license right. pending yep. your approval. Right. So um, and our only or our main concern was the um the uh, zoning requirements, and if you've talked to Stephen, then that's Stephen good. But that there was no, um, what are it was a um, what is it considered a home occupation? That's right. That's, that's what I read. Yeah, but I don't think, have any employees. But I think he has to issue a permit if he's considering it a home occupation. No, it says no permit. No, no permit requires no. not a minute. Exempt home occupation, resident owner is the only employee, no clients, no signs are outdoor storage, no deliveries, office to use only. But I don't, you know. I guess. And to me, it's kind of like if you want to, if you want to grow flowers right. and bring them to your floor, your own flower shop, you don't need a permit. But I'm not an expert at zoning, so. I don't see I mean, a distinction. I mean, you said no. No very helpful. Yeah, there's no reason to request a second. Yeah, yeah. he said it. To me. So I would move we grant the permit. I'll second it. Motion by Susan, second by Ray to grant the permit um, as submitted. If there's any other discussion among the board, if there's no other discussion, I'll call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's four in favor with one absent. The motion carries. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Sure. So I've been in touch with the Cannabis Control Board about our retail. We've applied for a retail license. And I asked if I could be approved by the town, by the commission, Woodstock Commission, before I get my license. And they said that you can do that. Okay. You don't have to. So is there any way I could get on, like, you know, you would approve it pending that I get my license? Um, Next, we can, just so that once I do get my license from yeah, the state, I yeah. can get going and I don't have to. That seems fine. We just we have to put it on the one October. October. Right. So at the next meeting, the October uh, evening meeting. On the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That'd be great. Sure. Thank you. Matt, Matt and Nick, we've got the application for the uh, Eastern States Cup which is on October 2nd from eight to four. And you guys have the already spoken to the trustees and have the permits from yes. them. Um, I think seeing oh, them probably, that, uh, yes, the next page. Yeah. No, we don't have the town, the oh, village permit. No. no. Okay. Um, That's what I meant. So they might ask you these questions, but which is the start point, suicide or? Saskadina. Sorry. Yes, Saskadina. <laughs> Mount Peg. To Mount Peg. Okay. But there's no like it's individuals after their race at one. 
ride into the next. So it's not like a group ride. So yeah. there's no need for traffic controller. Yes. However, uh, Officer Blish did want to have some traffic control. Okay. The, we came up with a slightly different route than was in the permit application. So I thought that would be helpful for you guys to know. Sure. Um, and I'm president of Woodstock Area Mountain Bike Association, Matt Stout. Vice President, also, um, and um, so there's the Woodstock Inn with the landowner. We build the trails, and the Eastern State Cups is an organization that helps host the actual event. Um, the the event itself is called an enduro, so the 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 kids that ride it are timed um, on their descents and they're not timed when they go between trails. Mm -hmm. And that was something we wanted to make sure folks understood that they're not racing from one parking lot to the next. Right. So they do one trail down at Saskadena 6, then they ride through the village to the Mount Peg Trail. Um, they do three trails at Mount Peg, then they ride back from Mount Peg to Saskadena 6. And so we just wanted to make sure that we, um, well, we weren't certain if we even needed a parade permit, quite frankly, we just erred on the side of caution. Um, there's less than 300 people in the event. So it's not like the 2,500 in covered bridges. It's not like 1,900 in the turkey trot. And they are, they're leaving individually at the start line. So they're told to go and they start climbing and then they descend and they go every minute. Um, the 250 riders and they start to spread out once you climb the hill and come back down. And so I think the key changes to the route, and I, I made little copies for everyone. This doesn't really show where they're riding through the town. So we'll explain the town roads versus the village roads. But what, what they're doing is from Saskatoon 6, they're coming Pomfret Road, they're making a left on to 12. And Chief Blish was offering to have a traffic control there, just so that when you go on to 12, right near that bridge, we all just got, got yes. to see. <laughs> I never knew the Pumphrey Road was uh, Route 166, now I know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that left on to 12, he wants to have traffic control. So there'll be riders coming one at a time and there'll be an officer who can hold up traffic if he feels like it's necessary. And then they come in and they make a right on River Street after passing Billings Farm. And this is the change from the application that you received in the package tonight. The, ch the change is, is in order to avoid going through downtown and, and maybe slowing up any, any traffic. So rather than going by building camps and making a right um, uh, at that next stop sign, they're going to make a right on River Street and they're going to make a left on Mountain Ave. They're going to cross the middle bridge and then they're going to go around the village green like a, like a roundabout and make a right on 106 and a left on uh, Cross Cross Street, and a right on Golf Ave, and then our trail starts on Golf Ave. Then they do their three runs at Mount Peg, then they exit down at Knox Meadow at the fitness center, and then they ride 106 back, and then it's the same exact route, but just in reverse. So they'll go around the green, past the new M&T Bank, um, they'll make a right back over the middle bridge, right onto River Street. And then Officer Blish would like to have the same traffic controller change position and help the riders go from River Street to make that left on 12. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the changes that, you know, the application said no traffic control. And then we gave a slightly different map. So the, the village trustees uh, issued the permit with this change and with those two spots for traffic okay. control. Which so is Galf Ave up okay. and then over, over, down. For Knox Meadow and up 106. Yes. Okay. What's, Makes sense the, to me. what's the time span from when the first rider hits a public road to the last rider? So they start at the bottom of the S6 parking lot at 9 a.m. and it, it takes a normal half hour human being 20 minutes to go up. <laughs> uh, Nick probably does it 15 minutes, but yeah, so they'll get up. Like the first rider gets up in 20 minutes, gets down in two to three minutes. And so the first rider could be going onto the Pomfret Road by like artistry buildings at around 9.20. That's the first time someone hit the public road. Mm -hmm. And then this came up in the trustees meeting. When the sort of last rider, the entire stage right. um, come back, like when would this traffic controller need to get the last person from River Street onto 12? And um, 
we think that could be maybe as late as 4 p.m. Just because, you know, you get some, they're not timed in between their segments. So they can go as slowly as they want. As long as they have a timing chip and then they just, mm -hmm. they go, they get timed on the, the, the trail. Uh, One of the, I guess, criticisms with Overland was, you know, people trying to get out of their driveways and, and just not a lot of notice. Would you, do you plan to put notice like in the paper and on listserv and any signage? So our, our plan is definitely to hit the, the Vermont standard. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we had talked about um, putting like route signs along the way, not just for the homeowner, but for the riders themselves. Um, and so we, we th those were our current plans. Would they go up in advance? I mean, I just think the more notice people have that, hey, I'm going to have trouble riding, yeah. driving on we my would road. Put them up Friday and take them down at the end of the day, Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, so the <clears throat> events on Sunday, but we'd have them up on Friday because some people the day before, like, will ride uh, the mm -hmm. course just to practice. Yep. So you're saying that they go up one at a time. So it potentially could be a line of bikes going through, or are they going groups? Um, They're going to get pretty spread yeah. out. Yeah, I mean, I don't. It's hard to say for sure, but I mean, you could have literally individual riders going down, through, you know, riding through the village. I'm sure there'll probably be a little bit of grouping up, but it's not certainly going to be something like the Overland, where there could be hundreds of riders coming through at once. That was that was 1,200 riders in a mass start who were in a race, and this is. Um, less than 300 who are not timed. And we have instructions that say, ride single file, stay to the right of the road, obey all traffic laws, um, be courteous to all other road users. Um, and then I gave special directions to how to get around the green. Mm -hmm. Told them, you think of it as a roundabout, merge into the outside lane, get into the inside lane to go, come around it, merge back to the outside lane to, to make your right. Everything looks in place to me. Hey guys. Yeah. Any more yeah. questions? Or? Gary? Nope. Because I want to just condition the permit on on doing what you said as sure. far as notice in the in the standard and some signage up by Friday. Yes, sir. Do you want it both listserv in the paper? Because we we tend to keep a lot of stuff out of listserv. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the listserv. I don't read it. Um, yeah, Vermont 50 just put their notice in the form in the standard, so we would do the standard. Okay. So with those conditions, yeah. I move we approve. All right, I'll second it. Motion by Susan, second by Ray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four, four in favor, one uh, one absent, motion carries. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. We have conference select board tomorrow night, so if that one happens, then we that will happen. Cutting it close. So that brings us to old business. First being the EDC approval of extension of marketing grant to February of 23. That's yes, but that's two next. Oh, sorry. I was looking. Okay. <laughs> Why do you want to wait? No, no, I don't. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. <laughs> Um, um, last August 2021, a year and a month ago, the EDC and the Select Board approved a one-year marketing program to build a new marketing platform uh, the, to improve our marketing. The plan was a 12-month plan. We did it in August because we didn't want to wait until January, the normal cycle of funding. So we started in August. The idea was to build, it was going to take 10 months to build the platform, which involved taking lots of, mostly content creation, taking videos of people in different seasons. And, and then the last two months, we were going to test the platform, actually using it for marketing. The purpose of the platform is to collect names of people and contact information who are interested in Woodstock and to identify their interests, not just raybourgeois at gmail.com, but 
I'm interested in gardening or I'm interested in outdoor activities or motor, uh, you know, mountain biking or whatever. We built the platform on time and on budget. We started testing it in July and August. And the results were actually pretty spectacular. In six weeks, we identified, we identified, increased our list of people. The same number, it took us six weeks as what we had done in the prior five years. So it was 3,800% improvement <laughs> in our performance. The funding was supposed to, was through the end of August. We saved a little bit on the cost. So the funding is actually, took us through the middle of September. Anticipating that we, the EDC voted, we had one more season of content left to collect winter. We don't have, we don't currently have content for, for full, sorry, for fall foliage, because it was too soon. We started the program at the end of August last year. So we currently have three seasons worth of content. The content is reusable for the future. I mean, you might refresh it slightly, but fundamentally, the most of the investment was done to create this content season by season, which then rotates. We need one more season. And so, and we'd like to continue the program because we, again, we've got 3,000 people in the first five years. We got 4,000 people in the first two months. So we think over the next five or six months, we can pick up 20 or 25,000 more contacts to market to, which would be, you know, an eighth, a huge increase, obviously. We considered three options, stopping the program and not getting those benefits. We still have the platform, but we couldn't really market during foliage. We could only market three seasons. Just running it through, get, getting through foliage, two months, which would cost about 22,000, or continuing it through February which would then take us to an annual funding cycle. And we decided, we, we voted to, uh, to fund it through February. It's $45,832 to continue it. It's either, sorry, it's through the end of February. Um, and I just wanna say, not that this particularly affected our decision, but during the course of this, the last three months, really, we've increased our forecast for our revenues for 2022 by slightly more than 45,000 <laughs> uh, because the economy has been doing better than we forecast. So, in fact, we'll end the year with slightly more reserves than we forecast, even though we're ending up proposing spending 45,000 that we didn't fully anticipate. So, our recommendation so that's what we did. There's some presentation that shows what I've just said. Um, and we're recommending that we uh, fund this $45,832. I've got no questions and no concerns. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the EDC spent cost of $45,832. Second. Okay. Motion by Ray, second by Susan to approve the expenditure by the EDC of $45,000. 832 um, for the program, the marketing program. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries the four, four in favor, one absent. Thank you very much. Right. Brings us to. Yeah. No, yeah, we need better luck, please. Flashing yellow light. <laughs> oh. He's going to bring tape. Yeah, I'll bring the tape. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, so, that brings us to Loop Road, which I was just on. There, I'm back at it. Yeah. Um, this is what a uh, discussion carried from last month. We've seen the map. Um, this is the agreement um, that was drawn up with Peter Vollers. Is there anyone? Is there yeah, any so uh, myself, Greg McKenney, and uh, Tyler's here on Zoom as well. Um, right. Yeah, we came in last select board meeting and presented the map, and I believe we we're just missing the paperwork yep. that Tyler had provided and you guys have in front of you there. I just had one question. Um, yep. Paragraph three, which seems to be an agreement between South Woodstock Field and Forest and Fernbrook LLC. I'm not quite sure why that's in our agreement and if it needs to be there. It doesn't appear that Fernbrook LLC is even a party to this agreement. So I didn't feel they should that that paragraph should be in the 
I'm going to defer to Peter, uh, but my understanding is that the the Loop Road has been relocated on lands of South Woodstock Field and Forest, and then I'm going to guess that Fernbrook is taking over the portion of lands between the two roads, and then Fernbrook, excuse me, uh, South Woodstock Field and Forest is conveying lands to the town. Yeah, I, I think it's it's just a um so you just wanted you want this piece to be a private agreement between I yeah, I just yeah. don't think it belongs in our our agreement. Right? That's, I mean it doesn't do anything, it has nothing to do with the town. That, Is that correct? That that's tr that's right. That's fine. I mean it makes it's perfectly fine. You can just remove that section. Yeah. That was my only. We'll approve the um, the land swap um, and deleting paragraph three. Paragraph three in its entirety. Yep. All right. Is that a motion? Yes, that's my motion. Motion by Susan. <laughs> Second. Second by Ray to approve the. Um, Town, uh, the town highway right of way relocation agreement uh, as provided and delete paragraph three in its entirety. Uh, is there any other discussion among the board? No. Okay. Um, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, aye. Or, aye. <laughs> aye. Motion carries four to zero with one absent. Thank you very much. All right, sand bids. Thank you. So um, what I discovered after the uh, first uh, discussed this um, was that we can do this the least expensive way by purchasing the uh, dried screen sand from D and D excavating twelve dollars and twelve cents per ton and the um, dry manufactured sand from Twin State at $18.10 a ton. That includes the 3 8 um, stone, which isn't really clear on the spreadsheet. Um, and that will enable us to get the product that we need at the least expensive um, pricing of those two categories. If we decide, and, and we do generally buy a small amount of three eighths crushed stone um, and have a little bit of that at the highway garage, we'll, we'll buy that from Pike. Um, but I guess what I just didn't make clear was that Twin, well, I guess I did, Twin State, <coughs> 3H stone in the dried manufactured sand for that $18.10 a ton price. Um, and then those two companies, D and D excavating Twin State, they, they work together um, and they're actually working in the same pit um, somewhere in Heartland, I think. And um, and then they ship us equal amounts and we combine them. Um, at the highway garage. Does that make it? It does. It is, that makes more sense than the email I was trying to de decipher. Oh, the email. <laughs> oh, thank you. Okay. This helps. Um, right. Sorry. I thought, so, I thought no. it was perfectly clear. <laughs> it actually is now that you've explained it. When I'm, okay. But, so, um, am I right if I say we buy that I move, we buy our dry screen sand from D and D excavating. We buy dried manufactured sand, which might include. Which does include does include the crushed, the three eighths crushed stone yeah. from Twin State, and to the extent we need additional three eight crushed stone, we buy it by, from Pike. Yep, okay. that's my motion. All motion right, <laughs> motion by Susan, second by Ray, as read by Susan already. Yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I've now learned more about sand than I ever. Looks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, like, like Tyler has a question. Oh. When you're finished. 
I was just okay, waiting. So the that motion carries four in favor, one absent. And Tyler. Uh, I was uh, going to ask, um, I think someone needed to be designated to sign the paperwork. Um, and I just wanted to sort of figure out the mechanics of just getting the paperwork signed. What's that? You can amend your motion to authorize the chair to do that. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, that was the motion, right? So I'll yep. amend the motion to authorize um, Joe as the chair of the select board to sign the um, town highway right of way relocation agreement. I'll second it. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Amendment carries. Great. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up. So I think the next thing is the uh, Peter can. Oh, nope, no. Nope, new business. And then the next thing is Peter can Hill speed speed request. Um, got two rivers uh, survey here. The uh, daily average was 78 cars between May 21st and June 4th, 20. 22, um, the 85th percentile, um, each direction was 27 and 28 miles per hour. The post speed limit is 35 miles per hour. Um, Rita's summary is that the 85th percentile of the vehicles traveling on this road are going at speeds below or slightly below the posted speed limit and there does not appear to indicate um, an issue with speeding. Um, I know Dolores's comment was that the additional they put it where she has a lot of Icelandic ponies and stuff mm -hmm. so that people tend to go slow there. And I know another Peterkin resident told me that there is speeding. Yeah. I'm just not clear how changing the speed limit is going to change yeah, speeding. I, I, and I also wasn't sure if there's even a speed limit sign on the road. I believe there is. I mean, I can, I, can, I, can, I can go drive. I'll, I'll have to survey some of the roads that might need some posted limits. I know most of them have it. Um, I'm not opposed to lowering them. Um, I do think that for survey requests that come before us, I think we should be systematic with collecting them in the future and doing it every few years. Um, Cause I don't like, it creates a lot of work to amend a ordinance, certify it for court, but is there any retain, you know, retain copies for 15 years or whatever we need. But point to this, there really any, any reason to do it? No, I think the reason would be the presence of elderly pedestrians, cyclists, horseback riders on blind corners. Um, Ten miles an hour on a blind corner. <laughs> Right. Yeah. The survey doesn't show, at least the evidence we have is that there's not no, a lot of no, speeding no. going on. You know, it there's may be that they put it in the wrong place, but that's, you know, yeah. we don't have any, anything to show us that. I'm also not sure how much budget we have in the highway budget to keep replacing signs. Yeah. <laughs> not much. Um. So I would call for a motion. Um, well, I'll, I'll make a motion to uh, go to two rivers out of Kichi's findings that nobody speeding on that road and keep the speed limit as is. Is there a second? Second. Um, I mean, uh, just a little. The the impetus for this was requests from the people who live on Peterkin, right? Yes. Right. No one's here. No one's there. I mean, I'm. I'm I don't know that we asked them to come or not, but I'm generally in favor of lowering speed limits. I think people are going way too fast on all these roads anyway. Um, I mean, it's it's, it's anecdotal. It's just so, I'm watching them do it and doing yeah. it myself. So, so if, if we um. Took some of the guidance that VLCT has posted. You're not supposed to post it below the 85th percentile. 
So 25 would be below the 80, the 27, 28, but we could do 30. Why go through all that trouble? We're fine. I mean, you know what? I mean, Kiri does have a good point that, you know, nobody's I mean, out there with a speed gun. No. I mean, what? I mean, what I mean, our whole society is based on the assumption that people will, in general, follow, you know, the sorts of guidelines that we're all agreeing to follow. We just don't have any evidence that they're not following it based yeah. on the Two Rivers survey. Well, the the issue being that, or the, they want them the to benefit go to lowering it is you're not you're not making violators out of 85% of the drivers. And you're giving the opportunity for a potential for safety by reducing the speed limit. In this case, it would be by five. I just don't think it's worth changing the signs five miles an hour either week. You know, how much how much does it cost to change the signs there? I don't know what a sign costs, but I mean we just a hundred have... dollars <clears throat> plus labor. So yeah, looking at maybe four hundred dollars per sign. We just did an ordinance like two months ago yeah. setting all the speed limits. Right. And I think I would rather wait. I mean, I know my road's posted at 35, which is probably way too fast, but I would rather, I think it's more efficient that we do that annually, right? The speed limits? Yeah. No, we have it. We do it when they've been requested or if something comes up. We did a whole list. We did them. Yeah, I have that whole list like as a file and I adjust it based on, you know, what, if we made any changes in the past, you know, I think we did it like 2007. You know, it I wasn't involved in that. On the board. And then again, 2018, yeah. and then again, but so what? we do global changes like that. Will that I think we should do global, global changes like will that like, require like global speed studies? It would require uh, no, it would be by road by request. Um I think what my recommendation is, you know, a uh, 30 miles an hour on this. In the future, if we get requests for more roads, we um queue them up. And every three or four years, um, look at the speed result, the speed survey results, and amend the ordinance globally as as dictated by the speed survey. Is there anything that talks about like width of road and speed? Because the, some of the dirt roads. Yeah. So VLCT has a six point like um, guidance, and it'd be like the width of the road blind spots, parking. So um, I don't think there's a lot of people parking on the street on Peterkin usage. Um, I would just rather see us do this all at once. This yeah. is our second one yeah. in, in a month. In a I, month. I do agree with you. It's just that this was brought before us one or two years ago. So it's the only thing is I don't want to put this off five years because we're changing our strategy now. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, if the vote is to deny it, the vote is to deny it. I do think we could make a statement going forward when people want to, you know, petition that their speed limits be lowered. They will add this to a queue that we review every right. so you know, specified unit of time. And I, I think that's kind of my general recommendation is to address this now because it's been in our been in our queue, but in the future to be more globally systematic mm -hmm. um, every three or five years okay. doing them. Well, if we can stick to that, yeah. What happens in the next? Well, someone, so I guess the way I see it we're pl playing out is somebody would call up, you know, if somebody makes a request for a road speed change before the select board. And if that request to do a, to have a speed survey done, it's approved by a select board, it would get put on a queue. And by planning with Rita um, at the end of a five-year cycle, so it's 2022 now, so 2027, we would do those all. We would do speed surveys on the requested roads, and then based on the results of those speed surveys. That's fine, as long as we stick to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is about managing expectations. If somebody submits a request, they know what they're doing, but we didn't have that expectation in place here. So right. I think we have to. What would you say, 30 miles an yeah. hour? Yeah. All right, I'll amend the motion to reduce the speed limit 30 miles an hour. Okay. okay. Second. Second by Kerry. Um, if there's no other discussion among the board, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So there's four in favor, one absence. The motion carries um, to reduce Peterkin to 30. Um, we want to talk about fall fall meetings on October the um, 4th. We would have a morning meeting, um, except we've also warned the farm to table um, zoning amendment for that afternoon at 5 p.m. So I think it's appropriate to cancel that morning meeting for November. Um, I think we can keep that meeting on the schedule because we plan on opening the budget cycle and looking forward to December, don't think there's a need for the morning meeting there. Is, is that pretty consistent with everyone's thoughts? That works sure. for me. So okay. November will be strictly a budget meeting. It'll be the normal time frame, but we'll do it as a budget meeting. I don't think there's anything that comes before us that's aside from that that's not emergent. We can just yeah, put it off to the November like somebody's staying up in the summer. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, to cancel, I think because it's a regularly scheduled, I think we need to yeah. cancel the October. We don't need to, I think we need a motion to cancel October and December. Right. I'll have a motion to cancel October 4th and December. Sixth. Sixth. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second by Susan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, town health officer appointment. A uh, one that was filled out. Is it blank? No, it's blank. Okay. Well, uh, probably everybody knows that David is our uh, health officer. Esteemed health officer. He's up for reappointment. And he can read and take it. <laughs> a motion to appoint David Green as a town health officer. Second. All right, motion by Ray, second by Susan to appoint David Green as the town health officer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Any other business? I've got nothing else, so we're uh, ready to go into executive session, which will be under Title I, Section 313. Let me just pull up the subsection. Should be contracts here somewhere. Right. Right. I think if you say contract. Yeah. yeah, we'll just call it contracts because I don't actually, I was scanning through it real quick. Um, so executive session under title one, section 313 for contract. Move we move into executive <coughs> for that purpose. I'll second it. Yeah, yeah. all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. <coughs> I make a motion to approve the Town of Woodstock Emergency Services Agreement with the Town of Farmford uh, to accept the contract as is. Second. Motion by Rick. Second by Kerry to approve the Town of Woodstock Emergency Service Agreement with the Town of Pomfret. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries four with one absent. And that just has minutes left, which is 
August 9th and September 6th. I'll make a motion to accept the August 9th and September 6th minutes. Second. Motion is made and seconded to accept the meeting, the meeting minutes of August 9th and September 6th. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. And can I get a I'll motion? Make a motion please. <laughs> Was that the second? I think that was a second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Non-debatable motion carries.